Well, you're right. The sun is rising, but I tell you, Jamie, no one has gotten much sleep since the Tide won that national title last night. Nick Saban is really proud of this team for a few reasons. Number one, it's very difficult to repeat. He said this team could have easily rested on their laurels. They could have just said, oh, we're the champs and we're the team to beat. But no, they actually challenged themselves. They pushed themselves. And Saban is ready to come back and win yet another national title. And now, if you want to know the latest in the score, it's 27-25 Tuskegee leading. Now, Alabama State actually just came back in the fourth quarter to score 25 points, but they went for two. And, well, they came up just a little bit short. So 27-25, two minutes, four seconds left on the clock right now. So far, it's been pretty much a big Tuskegee game. Tuskegee leads in total yards, 402 yards to Alabama State's 375 yards. Game still going on, so we'll have plenty of reaction coming up throughout the remainder of the evening. And we've got to get back down to the field to get that entertaining post-game report. That's going to do it live here from the brand-new Hornets Stadium. I'm D. Jackson. Jeff, let's go back to you. Yes. The 2012 All-Star Game is in the books with an 8-0 victory. The National League reached the American League here in Kansas City for the 83rd Midsummer Classic, and it was a tremendous game for Matt Cain. He picks up the victory, and Milky Cabrera, the MVP, the San Francisco treat. Both of those guys showing the Giants fans that uh, they are definitely caliber of being on this All-Star team. What about Chipper Jones, though? His final All-Star Appearance, he makes the pregame speech and gets these guys rolling. How about rolling for five runs in the first inning and the National League never looked back. An inspirational moment for Chipper in his final All-Star game. Just enjoy the, the opportunity. You never know when your last one's going to be. And, and, you know, I let them know this is, this is definitely my last one and I'm going to enjoy each and every minute of it and I'm going to enjoy a clubhouse and a dugout playing with these guys. I think it got them going, man. And, you know, we came out early and, and got things and got things uh, going. And uh, he went out and went in his last All-Star game. You know? Now for Braves fans, don't worry. They say they are ready for the second half. Going to take a couple days off to get a little rest and relaxation. We'll be right back at it at the end of the week. Now the All-Star game is a special time for every baseball fan. But got to tell you on a personal note, being from Kansas City, the hometown did do a very good job with this year's All-Star Game, so I have to say my hat's off to the people in Kansas City who truly made this a royal affair. Reporting from the 2012 All-Star Game in Kansas City, I'm D. Jackson, CBS 8 News. Now back to you. Now, sports coverage that's everywhere. Here's the 8 Teams, D. Jackson. Yeah, good evening to you. Former Carver standout Craig Sword had his emotions running high before tonight's matchup with Alabama. Sword was named freshman of the week, and the Dogs came in riding a three-game winning streak. But Alabama came in rolling deep, as in deep from the three-point line. Levi Randolph scored 18 points. Rodney Cooper added 17, and Alabama coasted to a 75-43 victory over Mississippi State. Alabama is now 10-6. They opened the second half with five consecutive three-pointers, including the first three from Trevor Lacey to push a 30-22 halftime lead. Sward added nine points on the night. Also, letting you know, Arkansas beats Auburn tonight 88-80 in double overtime. You know, speaking of Auburn, in a vote only separated by two points, Carver quarterback Jeremy Johnson was named the 31st recipient of the Mr. Football Award today in downtown Montgomery. Johnson will be attending Auburn in the fall. He threw for 3,193 yards this season with 31 touchdowns, helping lead Carver deep into the playoffs. Johnson also was named Class 6A back of the year, and he was extremely thankful to receive the high honor of Mr. Football. My heart was being fast, knowing that I wanted to win this award. Um, you know, um, it, it was tough, like they say, um, the close um, decision-making um, history. And my heart was just being fast, and when they called my name, all I could do was just drop my head. And I wouldn't be here for one for my teammates today. And now, all I could do is just now just get myself ready to try to win Mr. Basketball. In other award news, Edgewood Academy quarterback Dylan Ingram was named the AISA Back of the Year after he helped lead Edgewood to another state championship under head coach Bobby Carr. And then it was Otaga Academy star O.J. Howard who won the AISA Lineman of the Year. The top-ranked tight end recruit has already enrolled early at Alabama and Tuscaloosa, and afterwards both players were proud to be honored for their accomplishments. Uh, it's a great honor, you know, blessed. You know, I sat out four games to show the injury, and just to this award is a blessing, so I'm very proud. After a, another great season this year with a bunch of great teammates and a bunch of great coaches, you know, it's just exciting to see that your hard work and preparation can be fulfilled, you know, with a reward like this. Now, Notre Dame says a story about Manti Teo's girlfriend dying, which he said inspired him to play better as 
well, helped fighting the Irish get to the BCS title game turned out to be a hoax apparently perpetrated against the linebacker. Notre Dame says a story about Teo's girlfriend dying was inspired for him to play better as he helped the, the fighting Irish. They say that a girl said she had leukemia. The two had never actually met, but still stayed in contact. It was one of those things that caught the attention of people all around the country. Well, a report on, on Deadspin.com says there's actually no record of Lene Kikau existing. The university says that Notre Dame coaches were informed by Teo and his parents on December 26th that Teo had been the victim of what appeared to be a hoax. Now, ladies, if you would allow me to speak to the gentleman out there for just a second, guys, a little bit of advice. If you've dated someone for over two years and you've never met, she's not your girlfriend. Keep that in mind. That'll do it for you. Look at sports, guys. Let's go back over to you. Words of wisdom from D. Jackson. Thanks, D. Well, Stephanie, Thursday night we introduced you to what many fans consider a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to not only hang out with some of their favorite Braves players from the past, but imagine actually being on the same field and playing against these same heroes. Tonight, we step in the batter's box for part two of D's Big League Dreams. There's no question being a big leaguer is a lot of hard work. Trust me, I've seen it firsthand growing up with a pro baseball player in the family. So in order to be at the top of my game, I knew I had to do more than just get into shape. I also needed an intimidation factor, you know, just like the big time sluggers. But shedding 20 pounds and sporting the Fu Manchu wasn't going to be enough to impress Braves Hall of Famer Tom there's, Brown. Um, there's a lot of work to be done, but you know, I, I don't know that I would recommend him quitting his day job, so to speak, at this point. So obviously my first at bat didn't turn many heads, but I figured it would be selfish of me to get a hit when the team really didn't need one. So for my second at bat, with the bases loaded and no score in the ball game, it was time to go to work. Uh -huh, look at you! He gets here one day, he's got a double. Go, Will! He's got to get fined for that. following morning started with some cage work with Charlie Liebrandt. He served as our pitching coach, and while he's known as a crafty lefty back in the day, he stayed on me about staying disciplined uh, at the plate. He was really, really raw when I got him, and uh, I've turned him into a pretty good player. Uh, yeah, he's actually turned into one of our best players, really. He's fun. We're glad to have him on the team. Uh, he's been a good addition. Closing out the camp, it was finally our turn to take on the legends, Otis Nixon, Marquise Grissom, Sid Bream, Eddie Perez, and Javi Lopez, just to name a few. Number 15, D. Jackson. All in all, the scouting report, just let the people at home know, how did D. Jackson do during camp? I think, uh, you know, all in all, I mean, he had a little bit of a drop of the back shoulder, would swing up through the ball, but when, it, when the time came, he came up with a couple big hits and, uh, you know, played a great center field and second base for us. I think he has a future in this game. So what do I need to do for our next year's camp? Uh, probably get about six or seven inches taller <laughs> and, uh, you know, start hitting the ball over the fence a little bit more. So now we know what we need to work on. i got to get in the weight room again. All right. It certainly was a week that none of the campers will soon forget, bringing back the fond memories of Little League and when they dreamed of one day playing in the bigs, forging relationships that will last a lifetime, bridging generations with their universal love for the game and Atlanta Braves baseball.